Today on the Relationship Revival Show, we have Dr. Winnie Wang. Winnie is the queen of compassion and transformation using both science and spirituality. She is a trauma-informed licensed acupuncturist, shadow worker, Reiki, and intuitive healer, and a professor in acupuncture at Alhambra Medical University. Her clients often have anxiety and depression and feel stuck in their physical or emotional pain. Winnie is passionate about teaching people how to release the trauma from their their bodies. She believes wellness belongs to everyone, regardless of income level, and provides free resources online for everyone to access. I'm excited to pick her brain about the mind-body connection, because even though I live in my body, I don't know much about it, and I'm fascinated to kind of peel back the curtain and find out exactly what's going on inside these things that we use to walk around. You're listening to the Relationship Revival Podcast with John DeBach, also known as Mr. Spirituality. That's me. I'm your host giving you insights and guidance from over 10 years in the field of this amazing journey we call romance. On this show, I go over everything you need to know about how to get into a relationship, how to get the most out of a relationship, and sometimes even how to gracefully end and a relationship without pulling your hair out and going crazy. And occasionally, I'm even joined by new and old friends who are also relationship experts to bring you guidance and wisdom with new perspectives. Thanks for stopping by. Dr. Wang, Winnie Wang, how are you? I'm great, Mr. Spirituality. I'm so excited to be on your show. Thank you for being here. I was, you know, we just had a quick chat before we rolled and I was telling you, you know, we we haven't really had a chance on the show yet to talk about the body and the way the body stores trauma or the way the body deals with stress. And uh, I don't know what your experience is, but relationships can be a little, just a little bit stressful. <laughs> if, you're, <laughs> if, you, if you're in, if you're married and you have a pulse and you haven't dealt with stress, I would double check that pulse, I think is the right kind of mentality. Um, so before we get started with talking about details, why don't we give people a little bit, I mean, I read your intro, um, so people kind of know, give us your story in your own words, though, how you kind of got to where you are. Yeah, perfect. So in 2009, I had a spinal injury while I was giving birth to my second child. And with a crooked spine, everything, wow. it hurts, right? I have neck pain, lower back pain, hip pain, knee pain, ankle pain, and my organs are all sitting in the wrong place. And because of that physical injury, I then manifested anxiety and depression, right? Because if you imagine all of a sudden you can't sit in a chair for 10 minutes and that of course put a lot of stress in my relationship. Well, all of a sudden I felt like 24 seven victim. Yeah. Right. Like I problem. couldn't, yeah. I couldn't recline and watch a movie and I felt like a loser. I can't play tennis like I used to. I can't do jumping jacks. And I think that, um, you know, in real life, in relationships, sometimes things happen, you know, accidents happen, we lose a job. And, you know, when you take the vow and said, I do, I do, you don't really know what you're getting into, right? Um, yeah, nobody and, does. Nobody's really prepared for this. Tell me a little right. bit, before we get into that, tell me a little bit, so were you born with a spinal, like a, a crooked spine, or was it an injury? What, how did that happen? Yeah. So it happened during the labor of my second child. Oh, so I, I've so, never heard of that. That's so interesting. During labor, what, yes. from the pressure of labor, the spine went out of whack or how does that happen? Yeah. So basically I was under a lot of hormones, right? Because the body has to stretch so that the baby can come yeah, out. Sure. So literally the hip bones become very flexible mm -hmm. and during that time because i was lying crooked mm -hmm. so when the hormones stopped pumping my my pelvis stayed crooked oh it, wow yeah so so it's interesting because of course the the body keeps the score and it's like a chicken or egg thing in what right? way what so so it's like if i have hip pain that can cause anxiety, depression, or if I have anxiety and depression, I can manifest hip pain. 
Right. So one can lead to the other. And in this case, the reason why I manifested this hip pain was because the whole time during my labor, I was so worried about my first child. Mm -hmm. Right. Because up until that point, she has gone to sleep every night with her mommy. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, oh, my God, my ba poor baby daughter, she's going to be worried. Why did mom just disappear? And, you know, she was uh, about 21 months old at that time. Mm -hmm. And I can't explain, OK, mom will be back in two days. She's just at the hospital pushing out your baby sister. Right, <laughs> right. So because I had so much anxiety, you know, I that you were creating also, abandonment for your daughter, right? That's kind of where the anxiety stemmed from. Yeah. So I was kind of creating all kinds of problems. So really what I want to help all the podcast listener understand is the mind body connection, right? When I am in worry, overthinking, anxiety, fear, anger, any of these emotions, it actually shows up in the body. And vice versa, because I have this chronic illness, mm -hmm. then I started feeling like a victim and having, you know, 24 seven pain. And <laughs> I took it out on my then ex-husband. And well, at the time um, you were still married, right? Yeah. At that time we we're yeah. still married. Uh, but you know, I, I didn't know better. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. And actually that's why I now have a service is called um, Sacred Union. And, you know, uh, I know you're a couple counselor and yeah. I love couple counseling. But sometimes I just want to lie on the massage table. And when I get off from the massage table, it's like somebody wave a magic wand and then. Oh, I'm a big you know, I'm a big advocate for people getting massage and acupuncture. I think self-care is huge. I recommend it to couples all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So what I actually specialize in doing is couples work where, you know, um, the couple both go on the table, but before they go on the table, they say three things that they love about their partner and one thing that they want to change about their partner. Just one thing. <laughs> yeah. You can only pick one. <laughs> it's not, you can only it's pick not a buffet. One thing. <laughs> And then, so me and my boyfriend, who is also, um, you know, a body worker, Reiki healer and shaman. So we would each do the body work and release the trauma from the body. So, you know, because in my experience, sometimes when you do couple counseling, it could feel a lot like, Oh, you said this and I said this and then you yeah, did sure. this and I did this. Right. And it could feel a lot like bringing up and rehashing the past when reality, the wound goes far beyond our dating life. Right. You, the wound usually occur between age zero and seven. Mm -hmm. You know, it's usually a father wound and a mother wound. Yeah. And it's usually stored in the body. So it's so fun for me to do this work because instead of talking about the problem, it's like, okay, everybody just lie on the massage table. Just let me do it. Right. There's not, <laughs> and there's then, no effort there. No, no, just sit, just lie down and receive. And, you know, me and my partner, you know, we, we both work on, um, you know, assuming a heterosexual couple here. Yeah. You know, I, I work on both the, the man and the woman, and he also works on both the man and the woman. And so we balance out whatever father, mother wound that, you know, the couple come with. And so I love what I do because it's so complimentary to having, you know, a couple therapist, but sometimes you got to work on the mother, father wound, but just by lying on the massage table. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, what is it, what does it look like? Is it, or what is it, what does the experience feel and sound like and feel like to the actual couple? Does it feel like a massage? Is there music playing? Is it more Reiki where it's non-contact? When you say your boyfriend's a shaman, you know, a lot of people don't know what that means. Is he waving around incense? Are there things being chanted? I, you know, this, I'm, you've totally sparked my curiosity. 
Sure. So I think it's fun to dive into a story or case study. So, okay. So our most recent couple, the, the man's, uh, description of the woman is that she always feel not enough. You know, she's always saying, oh, I feel fat. Or, you know, the man says, if there's one thing I want to change about my girlfriend is I wish she knew how beautiful she was. I wish she knew how perfect she was. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, then we asked the woman, okay, what's the one thing you want to change about the man? She says, I wish he knew how powerful he is. Right. You know, um, I think that sometimes men, they, they might be serving, um, under their capacity. Okay. Yeah. I see that. Right? Sure. So it's like, you know, the woman sees you are meant for bigger things. You know, of course, maybe you can make more money or you can have a bigger title or promotion or job, but the woman sees that the man has the potential for bigger things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so in this case, you know, then the couple then goes down and lie on the table and then, you know, then I, I, work on the woman's um, hips and also stomach organs. In what way? Because, how do, you, how yeah. do you work on it? Exactly. So this is where I bring in the philosophy of the five elements. So uh, for those listeners who don't know, five elements come from traditional Chinese medicine. So we have wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. So digestion is the earth element and the organs related is stomach and spleen. Okay. And what that means is when we overthink or when we have anxiety, that actually impairs our digestive function. So it's like... <laughs> How are they connected? The so that's because one of the things that's that I truly believe is that there is a mind body connection. But one thing I've never understood is what is the connection? I mean, I know when you're nervous, everything just feels like it's vibrating, you know, but how does that have a direct impact on those organs? Yes. Thank you for that question. So it is a chi disorder. Chi means energy. Mm -hmm. So what that means is in the medicine textbook, we say that when the person overthinks, it causes chi to tie a knot or bind. So basically, whenever you overthink, you're causing knots in your abdomen. Mm -hmm. So that if you have a lot of knots in your abdomen, then you can't receive. So the stomach organ is built for receiving. And when you have knots, you can receive. That's why... This is really funny. A lot of women can't relax and have sex, right? Sometimes I just think, you know, if only the women can relax and have more sex, then all the couple questions and problems, conflicts will go away. And then you hold ask on, the hold question. On, hold on, hold on. <laughs> You're saying if women have more sex, couples' problems wouldn't exist as much? Yes, yes. I'm going to repeat that again. So if women have more sex with their partners, there there'd be less issues? Yes. You're yes. for all the men listening there. I think you just got a standing ovation. So <laughs> <laughs> you see the the secret is if you want to have more sex with your woman, okay, don't spend time talking about the problems in the relationship. Let's just go for the pleasure in the relationship, mm -hmm. right? Like kissing feels good, hugging feels good, right? Touching. But then the question is why do a lot of women have a hard time relaxing, right? Um, I'm a doctor. And so when I talk about penis and vagina, please know that there's a medical term. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm a professional. I would hope if when, you're using medical terms like that, that it wasn't anything other than medical. 
It's not not super romantic to refer to it those ways. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the medical term is we want the penis to get hard and we want the vagina to get soft. Uh -huh. So what that means is we really want the man to get hard in the sense that he takes on more responsibility, right? He provides the structure, the discipline, and he's taking care of the women. And so that the woman can just have no worry in the world, relax and sing and dance and, mm -hmm. you know, just soften and relax her being. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. So it's so interesting. We so we had a guest recently, Elliot Katz, who's a really great guy from Canada, who talks about the male role in relationships and how men need to learn to be leaders again. And this kind of plays right into that. You know, when you when women don't have to make decisions, when uh, not that they're incapable by any means, God forbid, but like when they don't feel like that burdens on them, the tension releases and they can feel more feminine. And now that I'm talking to you, it's clear that it has a physical impact, a physiological impact. So it, and that brings the intimacy back because now you're preparing for physical intimacy by virtue of the character that you're taking on as a male and female in the relationship. That's so beautiful. Yeah, um, I think that a lot of the problems can be solved without talking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, talking is great. I mean, that's what we're doing right now. We're having this yeah, beautiful sure. conversation. But I believe that 80% of communication is nonverbal. Yeah. So, you know, verbal communication is great, but, you know, touching is great and body work is great. And so, I just wish that more people would just get on the table and just let us serve them. You so know? let's go back to what that looks like. So you were talking about the case study where the woman wanted him to realize his true potential, which is yes. about him being firm and on a physical level hard, right? And you wanted the woman, he wanted the woman, ironically, to play right into her femininity, which is to stop worrying, stop having thoughts, and just accept that she's great, have that confidence, making her softer. So when you say, okay, we're going to work on this midsection in the, in the stomach, is it like, a, what does it feel like? Is it a deep tissue massage? Are you bringing in acupuncture? What are the, what's the actual physical mechanism you're using? Right. So um, in yoga, we always talk about soul, mind, and body, right? So when you're on the table, there's some physical uh, manipulation uh, and breath work, yeah. meditation, where simply where you breathe into is where you heal. So um, I happen to be an acupuncturist, so sometimes I do do acupuncture and you know, I, do, I am very a hands-on person, but there's also another component, which is the soul component. Mm -hmm. So the way I explain the soul, because I have a computer science degree from MIT, is the soul is like the operating system, right? So if you have bugs in your operating system, like my iPhone here, if it has bugs, it's going to crash. Yeah. So what do we want? We want software updates, right? So then the question is, how do we get software updates so that we can download this improved software mm -hmm. so that you don't just trigger the same place every single time. And so that is the, you know, the shamanic work, you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, Dr. Gabamate talks about this when a child has to decide between authenticity and attachment, they always pick attachment. So what that means is imagine your child between age zero and seven, you can either stay authentic to your truth or you can stay attached to your mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most children 
will choose attached to mom and dad. And so in order for them to obey mom and dad, please mom and dad, they actually cut off a part of their soul. It's kind of like in Harry Potter, you know, how Voldemort cuts off parts of their soul. Mm -hmm. So most of us have soul loss between age zero and seven, and that's the childhood trauma. And sometimes working with a shaman, he is calling back the soul that you cut off between age zero to seven back into your body. And so that is the magical part of this. And it's so beautiful because all you have to do is lie on the table and say, yes, I want my soul back. You know, that part of me that I decided to cut off when I was three years old. Yeah. Bring them back. Yes. Yeah, so that's what we do. That's very cool. Um, you have some, some language uh, in your in your bio and everything else that I've read about you about shadow work. What is shadow work? Yeah, so I'm going to tell you a quick story about my shadow work. So I've been a Reiki healer for a couple of years, and I've always been working with love and light. And then the divorce happened. And then I'm like, cuss word, Winnie, WTF, what does that say about you? You talk about love and light, but what does the data say? What does the report card say? The report card says that you are full of shadows. Uh -huh. <laughs> so shadow work is the process where we willingly dive into the deepest, darkest part of our psyche with the intention not to dwell in the darkness, but to transform into light. So, you know, I was very fortunate to have my divorce where it literally crushed my ego, brought me back down to my knees where I'm like, okay, Winnie, what's really going on? And there were so many dark nights of the soul, I tell you, where I was like, oh, it's because I did this or I said this, you know, and you know, the phrase, everyone is our mirror. Mm hmm it's true. Okay. Everything I ever complain about my ex-husband, it's in me. <laughs> <laughs> so what are my top complaints? I say he's selfish. Uh -huh. I'm selfish, right? I say, um, he is very judgmental. I'm very judgmental. You know, um, I say that, um, he is not able to listen to me. Well, I'm not able to listen to him. So basically, one day I wrote down everything I ever complained about my husband. Then I cross out the he mm -hmm. and put I. And I read that back to myself. I'm like, oh my gosh. Hmm. That, you know, everything I don't like about my husband and why I needed a divorce is in me. <laughs> and the most rewarding part of this is once I can own how I'm an, I have anger issues, I'm critical, I'm judgmental, I'm selfish, I don't listen. And once I do the work of transforming my shadow, it led to the most beautiful relationship ever. And so now I am enjoying more, yes, more sex, but also just more pleasure in life, more trust more engagement, you know, it, it's really, you know, uh, now I feel like when I say I have some love to give, it's real love. It's not that um, uh, calculated love, you know, before I did the shadow work, it's like this, I would secretly keep tab like an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. I gave <laughs> X units of time and X units of love. And let's see, how much did you give that back to me, yeah, right? Like yeah. keeping my score, love, which is, keeping score. Yeah, exactly. Not, I not was a, not a healthy habit. No, I was so keeping score and my love was so conditional and I was a resentful monster. <laughs> so how do you do what, what is the shadow? So I think I kind of get what the shadows are. What's the shadow work? What's the, how do you work on it? Yeah, so I actually wrote a book called Honoring Darkness, Embrace Shadow Work to Nourish and Grow Your Power. 
because what I found, because I'm a nerdy professor and I'm used to teaching curriculums with you know a syllabus and、yeah. you know structure. Was that sometimes people can go to their talk therapist and twenty years, yeah, they still have a talk therapist. They're still on their antidepressants. And what I really want to do is give people a structure, a program.、Mm-hmm. You know, you just buy the book and you do the exercises at the end of every chapter,、mm-hmm. and then now you have a solid foundation. To what shadow work is about. Got it. Got it. So you read the book and you kind of understand how to work through those dark places and and how to approach fixing them in your life. So there's a kind of a regimented process in how you do it. Exactly. But the best part is it's fun. You know,、um, I. A lot of people are like, "Well, why would I want to go look at my monster?" <laughs> And the answer is, well, there is. You can look at healing like、oh, I gotta show up to my couple counselor.、Oh, I gotta go to therapy, or you can look at life just like playing video games, right? So every、way. day, yeah, exactly. So I think that as a culture, we're so attached to outcome. Right, it's like having sex. We gotta reach orgasm or ejaculation. You know, if we don't ejaculate, it's as if we didn't have sex. Like people are so attached to crossing the finish line,、uh-huh. as opposed to, well, what? Let's just explore the body. You know, what if? Let's say I'm a man. What if I just stroke her hair? With no expectation of where that's going to go, right? What if I just massage her calves, with no expectation of what that will turn into, right? What if I just massage her shoulders, with no attachment to where that's going to lead? What if I just touched her with an open mind? So you're talking about being. Involved in the process is that what you exactly? Mean? Okay. So, like the game what, is not about finishing the game; it's about playing the game. Yeah, exactly. So, what if we don't think about healing like there is an end goal? Yeah, <laughs> but we're just in it because the process is beautiful. It's like the flowers on the journey are beautiful.、Mm-hmm. What if you can derive pleasure from Giving the massage on the calves or the shoulder, you know. What if you can derive pleasure just from sniffing her hair, right? Just kind of slowing down instead of always. Well, you know, if I can get her to, you know, excuse my language, but open her legs and take off her underwear. <laughs> that's like you know, like what if we just approach life with more of this. Wonder and curiosity. Yeah,、hey. I, I couldn't agree with、yeah. you more. I mean, there's there's a lot of neurological evidence that when you are outcome focused, that you actually are teaching yourself to hold a certain amount of resentment in the of the process because it's only about the outcome. But if you can trick your brain and kind of learn to embrace the process. And the outcome is just a side benefit, you know, like another, but like the cherry on top of the ice cream. Then you get addicted to it. People who do this with exercise, even not just intimacy, where they actually learn to like the process of working out, tend to stay much longer and tend to do it much more, you know, regularly than someone who's just about I need to lose ten pounds or I need to gain a certain muscle mass. The people who learn to enjoy the process. Have a have a longevity that just smokes everybody else. So I couldn't, and I think you're right. And doing this with yourself and your shadow work, doing this in your partnership with your with your romance, is a, a a beautiful thing to aspire to. Absolutely. And you know, John, you really hit upon this word that I love, which is longevity. You know, and I like to add the word sustainability. Right,、mm-hmm. so 
when we enter relationships, hopefully we're not just dating for three months, yeah. right? Hopefully the relationship lasts. Right. And how do we make relationship last? And as it turns out, we do that by having less ego attachment. Like I have to have my way. It's my way or the highway. Right, right. <laughs> right. It's like, well, you know, I care more about our connection yeah. than being right. You know, that's why I don't want my couples to come in here and talk too much because when you talk, you use your brain to formulate sentences. I just want them to experience love. Mm -hmm. Right. And the love is when we care more about the love and the connection and less about being right, then that is the key ingredient to making a relationship last and sustainable. Yeah, I think you're right. I think there are more people when they come in, especially into couples counseling, we work on, we work on the conflicts, we work on the communication, but I always try and encourage people outside of the sessions to go and ex do something where they can just enjoy each other, whether they're talking or not, something where they can reconnect because there's the fights will be there. You know, they're going to come no matter what. There's no such thing as a couple that doesn't fight that actually has real connection. That just doesn't ha I mean, you could have no fights with a stranger. Doesn't mean that you're in a relationship, but they're, they're waiting for you while they're waiting. Go experience the benefit of being in a relationship, the love surround yourself in a way that it speaks to you. And I think, you know, that's why I, I work with people who have individual therapists and then they come in for couples counseling and I tell them you should go do yoga. I mean, there's so many different ways to connect. And I think what you're doing sounds really interesting. I want to, I wanted to ask you a, a question. Does, and again, this is me just being fascinated with the body because I don't have any background in the physical world at all. So when you have disharmony and when you have tension in a relationship, does it get stored somewhere specifically in the body or does it kind of go all over the place? And then what do you do as a doctor? What do you do to kind of release it? Do you use acupuncture and how does that work? Because it's, to me, it's, you know, especially because I was born with Western medicine mentality, it all seems like magic. It's just like, okay, someone's going to wave a magic wand or someone sticks a needle up here. And then somehow my nerves are all connected and it says release. Like, I still don't quite understand the concept. I do know when my wife goes to acupuncture, she comes back a better woman. So I know it works. <laughs> I know it works, but I don't know how. And I'm so fascinated. So specifically just to kind of, I know it's a long winded question, but where does the trauma get stored and how do you release it? Sure. That's an excellent question. So um, every acupuncturist in the state of California, just because we're here, um, it's a four year medical degree. Mm -hmm. So we are trained to diagnose where the problem is. So I can't tell you, okay, well, all the relationship trauma is stored in the uterus or the hips, but uh -huh. you know, that's why everybody should pull out their Yelp and find the nearest acupuncturist and go get a professional diagnosis. Yeah. The best way that I can explain how it works is every day we have a lot of toxins, right? You brush your teeth twice a day. Yeah. Getting an acupuncturist is like having your system cleaned regularly. Right. So in my humble opinion, even if you're, you, you have perfect teeth, you should get deep cleaning twice a year, right? right. Go to a dentist. Yeah. It's like everybody should go to an acupuncturist once a month. That's just like flushing your toilet. Okay. That's when everything is working. You should see an acupuncturist once a month. But when you're having an active episode of anxiety or hip pain, then you should actually consider seeing an acupuncturist maybe two or three times per week for, you know, 10 sessions uh -huh. so that you can actually see the results, right? So imagine that one of the toilets in your house is clogged. 
It's actually stinky. And, you know, that stinky is not pleasant for you. And it's definitely not pleasant for your spouse either. So when I talked about how I had anxiety and then I just didn't see an acupuncturist at that time, I took it out of my then ex husband. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't do that. <laughs> um, you know, yes, get the help you need. And so really when you see an acupuncturist, they provide the diagnosis of like which parts of your body have a clogged bathroom. And then it's like hiring a plumber. They give you a, a special diagnosis and restore all the plumbing so that you are a abundant flowing individual again. So how does it work? So when you're putting a needle in from acupuncture, is it connecting to the nerve as well as the energy and how does a needle in a specific part of your body allow toxins to release just on a very basic level? Okay. So on a very basic level, here's a cell, right? Mm -hmm. So the cell will increase and decrease in size every time you breathe, right? So every time you breathe, it increase and decrease in size. And what is energy? Energy is the space between the cells. So in other words, scientifically, there's an inverse relationship, right? As the cell increases, then the space decreases. Yes. Yeah. So if you just do yoga or practice breath work regularly or Qigong, then your cells are expanding and contracting in equilibrium. Okay, so that is the healthy state. But when we have th th thoughts, when we're stuck in anger, uh, grief, fear, when we are stuck in our trauma, the, the victim stories, mm -hmm. then this mechanism of increasing and decreasing uh, is off. And actually, that's how cancer cells get formed. Cancer is like a cell that gets bigger, 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 because it doesn't know to contract, you know, contract down. and expand. So there are two ways to heal. Okay, one is, you know, if you go on YouTube and you do Qigong and yoga every day for 30 minutes, then you don't even need an acupuncturist because your own breath work can restore you back to balance. But when you go lie down on the table, it's like, just so much faster because that person can identify where the equilibrium is off and then signal the body, okay, bring equilibrium back to this, this part. And then you, your, the cell will increase and decrease in size. So again when you breath. put the needle, the acupuncture needle into that part of the body, that creates like a signal to the body to restore equilibrium. Is that what's going on? Yeah, actually, you know, I, I'm sure maybe some of the audience have heard of EFT, emotional freedom technique, where they're just tapping parts of their body. Mm -hmm. So you know what, actually, you don't even need needles. Okay, I can use fingers and tap my body. And where you tap is where the energy goes. Got it. So, you know, um, so for example, if I have headache, I can just put my hand here uh -huh. <laughs> and breathe. Like I don't, you, you know, and we do it almost subconsciously, right? If we have pain somewhere, we put our hand there because we're trying exactly. to draw the energy into that space. So the body has an amazing way of healing itself. Sometimes it just needs that direction of pressure or, a, or puncture or something. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, you know, you, nobody needs acupuncture because you can heal yourself, but acupuncture is where you get to just lie down and do nothing and all the work is done for you. It's like liposuction versus exercise, <laughs> right? It's like you can go to the gym and work for 40 minutes a day and maybe lose the weight, or you could lay down on the table and have someone suck out the fat. So acupuncture is that shortcut where you get to lay down and it's kind of done passively for you. Right. So, so that all the blockages in your body can be flushed. It's like having somebody clean your pipes, if you will. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm so glad I had you on. I, I felt like it was uh, education and a half. I know you have uh, your website, Mindful Healing Heart, but you also have a community 
uh, online where you where you kind of share more wisdom. Why don't you tell people how they can find that? Um, I'll put the link uh, in the show notes. But is there a kind of a shortcut way they can kind of discover that? Um, yeah, the easiest way is just go to mindfulhealingheart.com slash community, or you can use the navigation to click on community. Okay. And one of the things that I'm really passionate about as, you know, a doctor is, let's admit it, our country has a broken healthcare system, right? Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Some people have great health insurance. Some people don't have great health insurance. And my private sessions are, you know, a little bit on the high end side, but I really believe that wellness belongs to the people, right? So it's like, I want to share a lot of free content on YouTube, on social media, and also have a portal where people can talk to me and ask me questions and then I can answer them to the whole community because one person's question could be 40 uh, benefit 40 other people right so I really wanted a platform where if you got medical issue you can write to me and I will reply to everyone so um that's nice you know, this yeah, this platform is called Compassionate Transformation because we can all transform our relationship or health or financial blockages together. But the first ingredient is compassion, right? Because, you know, Martin Luther King says, hate cannot drive out darkness. Only love can, right? So we can't transform the relationship by hating who I am. I can't transform by hating who my partner is. I, I can't transform the relationship by hating where the relationship is right now. Yeah. Right. How we're going to bring change is to have compassion. You know, if you had the childhood that I have, of course it makes sense that I would behave the way that I do. And if my ex-husband had the childhood that he had, I have compassion that, of course, he's going to behave the way that he did, mm -hmm. right? So the first ingredient is compassion where you're like, well, it makes so much sense to me. Given your childhood, of course, that is the way that you show up in the relationship. So instead of coming with this judgmental and critical energy that I used to be full of mm -hmm. is to come with compassion. Yeah, it makes sense to me that you are this way and I'm this way, but let's do it together. I love that. Dr. Winnie Wang, thank you so much for joining us. You can find more at mindfulhealingheart.com. You can also find her book on Amazon. Thanks again for being here. It was so, so educational. And I know you helped a lot of people just by sharing your wisdom. And I I'm excited to see you doing that more and more online. If you're interested in learning how to get the absolute most out of your romantic relationships, then you're in luck because I have put together a free workshop or masterclass, if you will, about three secrets that people in happy relationships have discovered. You can view the workshop at mrspirituality.com slash three secrets. Again, it's completely free. Just go there and watch it. It'll help you on your journey, give you some wisdom, some things to think about. The website again is mrspirituality.com slash three secrets. That's mrspirituality.com slash the number three, the word secrets. It's all yours. Enjoy. Enjoy.